In Vedanta it is said, Sadhana Sadhya Viveka should be very clear. Sadhana means the means, Sadhya means the goal. If we miss what is Sadhana, if we misunderstand what is Sadhya, then that journey will be very difficult. Entire Bhajogovindam is to tell us that the Sadhya of life is not world. Sadhya means goal of life is not this world, goal of life is Govinda. Now this looks like a very fanatic statement. What do you mean, goal of life is Govinda, goal of life cannot be the world? To explain what Bhagwan means, he took up each idea individually. If somebody thinks, see world is a very broad term, within the world there are things which we have made as goal of life. Somebody thinks secular knowledge is goal of life. For that Bhagwan gave another perspective. Samprapte sannihite kale nahi nahi rakshati dukrun karani. When difficult times come, the same secular knowledge is not the only support that is going to save us. Then somebody who thought dhanam is goal of life. For that Bhagwan gave another perspective. Somebody who thought Vishaya Bhoga, that is goal of life. For that Bhagwan gave different perspectives. Like this, step by step, wherever we could have invested all our energy and thought this to be the absolute goal of life, Bhagwan says this is only sadhana, it is not sadhya. Sadhana means it is the means, it is not the goal. One should have healthy perspective towards sadhana. If you just criticize for the sake of criticizing, that is not a mature way to understand the subject. Any sadhana for that matter. Huh? Even if you take dhanam for that, for example, look at the beauty of dhanam. It can make us nishchinta for adhyatma sadhana. Hmm? If dhanam is not a concern, it will bring us a free mind to actually study Vedanta. But if I make dhanam as sadhya, if I make dhanam as goal, that is when these verses will come and talk to us more. Then Bhagwan took up the topic of satsang. He also gave us different questions to think about. Remember that five question paper? Five questions question paper. Kate kanta. Kaste putra hai. Kasya tvam. Tvam kaha kuta ayata hai. Then he also elaborated on the topic of jivan mukti. He said, spiritual path is not promising things after this life. What is the point, you know? Right now when we are living, we are miserable. And somebody says, after you drop this physical body, there will be a lot of joy. He says, everything is right here, right now. That is this portion of Jivan Mukti. Yoga Ratova, Bhoga Ratova. Sangha Ratova, Sangha Vihina. But his mind is in Brahman. That is why he is able to enjoy that bliss of Jivan Mukti. 
Then the last few verses that we are seeing, they are different sadhanas. Different sadhanas for abiding in this truth, making Govinda as our main goal. Geyam Gita Nama Sahasram. That will come now. Okay. Previous one was Kamam Krodham Lobham Moham Tyaktvatmanam Pashyati Soham. Did we see that verse? 26th verse. You were on 26th. Good. So Bhagwan said these are the four paths that we should not take. In Ramcharitmanas, there is a portion that we are seeing right now where Bhagwan meets Bharadwaji, Bhagwan Rama. And he asks him, Bhagwan, which path should I take? What does Bharadwaji tell him? He says, For you, every path is easy. But really speaking, that question is very interesting question. Means you are discussing path or discussing about path is meaningful only when you have a destination. Right? I cannot just meet you and say, okay, after 11.45, which path should I take? You say, no, depends on where do you want to go. You want to go to San Mateo, I'll tell you which path to take. According to destination, path is decided. But Bharadwaji, he, Bhagwan directly asks, which path should I take? And Bharadwaji says, every path is simple for you. Meaning, when it comes to Adhyatma, there are not many goals. Goal is only one, that is Bhagwan. Towards Bhagwan, there are different paths. One is called as Karma Yoga, another is Bhakti Yoga, third can be Ashtanga Yoga. All of them will lead to Jnana Yoga. Three paths converging into one, that is this Jnana Yoga. Now, if these are the paths that which we should take, what are the paths we should not take? That is given in this verse. Don't take the path of karma, path of desire. Krodha, don't take the path of anger. Lobha, don't take the path of wanting more and more, discontentment. And moha means delusion. We saw the correlation also. Huh? If karma is obstructed, krodha comes. Kama is fulfilled, Lobha comes. Kama fulfilled more and more, Moha comes. He says, I can do whatever I want. That is this pride. It was the same pride with which Ravana lifted Kailasa mountain. Along with Lord Shiva. Along with Lord Shiva. He says, that is this Moha. There is a metaphor Goswamiji writes in Vinaya Patrika. He says, who is this Ravana? Moha Dasamauli. Moha Dasamauli means it is Moha appearing with ten facets. And who is the brother of Ravana? He says, Kama. That is Indrajit. And Kumbhakarna, he is Tamas. Ahankara, who is in tamas. So it is said that ahankara which is in tamas, it is better it is sleeping. Moment it wakes up, lot of havoc happens. This is all of them are maya parivara. Maya parivara. Atma jnana vihina mudaha te pachyante narakani gudaha. I mean this mind which doesn't have the self-knowledge, doesn't have the power of sadhana, that mind need not worry about going into Naraka. Mind without sadhana, without Atma Jnanam is already in Naraka. This is what Gurudev had told one devotee who came. He said, uh, Gurudev, I am very afraid that all this Garuda Purana and everything when we read, so many description is there about Naraka. And he was going on and on and on about so many things. And Gurudev's answer was, my dear, you don't worry, you will not go to hell. Why is that? Because you are already there. <laughs> so mind which is having that agitation, 
we don't need anything else to come and torture us. It is very capable of doing it. The day we are able to use knowledge to quieten our own mind, that day we should start congratulating ourselves. This is to Sankramanam. Huh? Today is Sankranti. Sankramanam means moving to the next step. Sun moves from one position to another position, Makara Rashi. But what is that Sankramanam in terms of our journey? There would have been a time when we depended upon solution from Paristhiti. If situation changes, I am okay. Sometimes we would have depended upon person to solve things for us. If that person solves it, I am okay. True Sankramanam is when, when we can use knowledge to solve things for us. Whatever knowledge we have received, whatever knowledge we have gained, using that knowledge to look at Paristhiti in our own life. And I tell you, it's a great satsang. Satsang with whom? Satsang means two people, right? He says, satsang with that mind which has done Shravanam and the Paristhiti which is in front of me. Sometimes you have this question also. I have heard Vedanta for several years. What should I do so I can live it practically? I said, this is the part. Right now, whatever is the Paristhiti, Ask this mind which has done Shravanam, what does scripture say of looking at this Paristhiti? And seeking Bhagwan's grace to actually hold on to that solution. Right? Sometimes we'll get the right answer. What mind will still want to do what it has been doing before. For that, seeking his grace. How to seek that grace is the next verse. 27th verse. Geyam Gita Nama Sahasram Deyam Shri Pati Rupa Majasram Neyam Sajjana Sange Chittam Four sadhanas are given to seek the grace of the Lord. First one is doing some parayanam every day. Now see, out of several things which one can recite every day, Bhagwan Shankaracharya picks two of it. He says you can chant Bhagavad Gita and you can chant Vishnu Sahasranama. Nama Sahasram means thousand names of Bhagwan. So, any Sahasanama you can take, but here it is referring to Vishnu Sahasanama. The beauty of Parayanam is such, it will purify the mind the moment we chant. And more we develop familiarity with that text, more we become one with that text. We can seek support in that particular chant. Person who has nishtha in japa is called as japa nishtha. Person who has nishtha in tapa is called as tapa nishtha. Brahma nishtha is one who has nishtha in Brahma. But in between there is one more step, stotra nishtha. You know why? Because every stotram has a phala shruti. I mean this sadhaka has this confidence, if I chant this, Whatever is said in that Palashruti, I will get. Josatabara, Patakara Soi, Chutahi Bandi Mahasukha Hoi. Now, these Palashrutis are possible because they are divine compositions. Have you seen Palashruti for a poetry, Shakespeare? You chant it three times, you will get one result. Say, no, whatever is a Jiva composition, it will not have Palashruti in this way. 
Goswami ji says, my Ramcharit Manas is not composed by me. This was in the mind of Lord Shiva and that composition has just, you know, gotten a physical form through me. What is the last chaupai? Sakhi Gaurisa. Sometimes Hanuman Chalisa, any chaupai you ask, you have to start from Shri Guru Charana. <laughs> How does it go after that? Joshata bara patakara soi, chuta hi bandi mahasuka hoi, joya pade hanuman chalisa, hoya sindhi sake gaurisa. That is the line. Means this palashruti is true, for this the witness is Lord Shiva. Gaurisa means Lord Shiva. Like this, even for Vishnu Sahasanama, you see the last portion is all parashruti. Putrarthi will get putra, dhanarthi will get dhanam, vidyarthi will get vidya. So that is nishtha in stotram. Or simple benefit is mind will become pure, mind will become calm. Any shloka, any stotram that we can chant. Geyam Gita Nama Sahasram, Dheyam Shripati Rupa Majasram. Little bit of time exclusively turning the mind towards the Lord. Towards the form of the Lord, towards his Saguna Rupa. And keeping the mind there at the exclusion of all other thoughts. That is called as Dhyanam. And the shloka that does this dhyanam is called as dhyana shloka. So whenever we do puja, whenever we do any other sandhya vandanam, there will be few dhyana shlokas. For Lord Shiva, what is the dhyana shloka? Karpura gauram, karunavataram, samsarasaram, bhujagendraharam. Now we should go slow. Huh? When you say karpura gauram, karunavataram, means that form of Lord Shiva should come which is white as camphor. Karpura Gauram. Whose heart is filled with compassion. Karunavataram. The one who can shower compassion upon his devotees. Samsarasaram. He is the essence of this whole creation. Everything becomes meaningful only through the touch of Bhagwan Shiva. That pure consciousness. Bhujagendra Haram, one who is wearing a snake around his neck. Sadavasantam Rudayaravinde. Where do I find him? Right in our own heart, he is seated inside. When is he seated? Sadavasantam. Another meaning of Vasanta is the one who keeps the heart of a devotee lush and green. Vasanta Rutu is that. Like now, if you see mountains, how beautiful they are. Like that the devotee's heart is, with Bhagwan residing right inside, no place for anything else. Bhavam Bhavanim Sahitam Namami. To that Lord Shiva, who is along with Parvati Ji, I bow down. These are Saguna Dhyana of Bhagwan. Like this, every deity will have their own Dhyana. Kanchana Barana Biraja Subesa. Kanana Kundala Kunchita Kesa. By the way, our next text is Hanuman Chalisa huh? for this session. The whole thing is, when we chant Hanuman Chalisa, we should get a glimpse of Hanumanji at least once. Right? So that whole set of Chaupais, the three Chaupais, they are painting how does Hanumanji look. Keeping the mind in that Lord for a little bit of time. And one Mahatmaji would say, that mind which can turn towards the Lord sincerely, it will not remain the same as before. Even for a short time, if it can happen, what to talk about if it can happen regularly? That is the beauty of this dhyanam. If you have seen the movie On a Quest, in Gurudev's life, the initial part, he said this was the dhyanam he would do. Look at Lord Shiva outside, close the eyes and see him inside. That is Dehyam Shripati Rupa Majasram. Neyam Sajjana Sangye Chittam. We'll have several contacts, several social circles. 
but making sure that we take our mind to that company which will discuss about spirituality. Neyam means it will not happen naturally. You have to put forth effort to go to those places. It's a commitment from our side. If you are attending any study group, you say, no matter what happens, that particular day, I will not go anywhere. Very quickly we will find all other contacts will start dropping. They will ask for a few times, you know, Friday evening, where are you? He said, no, I have study group. I mean, that Sajjana Sangha is a great blessing. To keep any spiritual topic alive, we should keep discussing about it. That is this Sajjana Sangha. When we saw the word Satsang, we saw different meanings of the word Satsang. Right? One is with people, with literature, with our own mind. All of that is included here. Neyam Sajjana Sangye Chittam, Deyam Deena Janaya Cha Vittam. Whoever is in need, to that person, we should support by providing whatever resources Bhagwan has blessed us with. That is one law of the universe. Now there are different laws, okay? This is also one law. Whatever we give comes back in plenty. Whatever we give comes back in plenty. This is true for emotions. This is true for Anger, it is also true for physical resources. Anger one is easy to understand. <laughs> Whatever you give will come back in plenty. If that comes in plenty, good emotions also come back in plenty. It's only a matter of giving and how we give, for how long we give. Same thing is true even for resources. And it is said there are some auspicious days when it is given. The punya from that is multifold. Which yajna is this morning class we were seeing? Which yajna is it? Dravya yajna. Dravya yajna. Huh. Then the occasions are there. Either you have it on Sankranti, Akshay Tritya, Dhanteras. Special days are there when they say the punya karma is multifold. Times are also there. If there is a newborn child, they say dhanam done at that time has a lot of punya. Right? Parikshit Ji Maharaj in Bhagavatam, Yudhishthira, he gives a lot of dhanam when Parikshit Ji Maharaj is born. But main thing is the mindset. That whatever we give comes back in plenty, we will never fall short of that thing. That is the bhavana with which one should give. What are these four things for invoking the grace of the Lord? Four sadhanas to do that. Today my run rate has to be good. You have to complete the text because next session onwards we will start recaps. Now somebody who was not alert, just lived a very casual life, what happens to him? Sukhata kriyate rama bhoga Paschadhanta sharire roga hai Yadya pilo ke maranam sharanam Tadapina munchati papa charanam Sukhata kriyate rama bhogaha. When things were good, this person spent that good times in indulgence. Sukhata kriyate rama bhogaha. Means whatever different things that the sense organs could enjoy, he was only concerned about those things. 
that bhoga which is done without yoga leads to roga bhoga minus yoga equals roga remember the four types of devotees four types of jiva yatra stations we had seen in the first session who was the first one pamaraha second one was vishayi third was sadaka fourth was siddha jignesh bhai i think we should do some quiz on bhajagovindam also once in a while now this sadaka is not vishayi vishayi also does bhoga but he does according to dharma he does dharmic bhoga in a very controlled way in a very alert lifestyle he does all his vyavahara but this person is somebody who is pamaraha pamara means not thinking about consequences too much that bhoga will bring roga we can appreciate that more with food right if we do bhoga of food without thinking about consequences means at some point it will come back which we cannot escape sukhata kriyate rama bhoga paschadanta sharire roga there is lot of roga at physical body level disease at physical body level yadyapi loke maranam sharanam even though he sees this whole world is as though standing on a conveyor belt you see in airports they have those belts what is the destination where all these belts are going and culminating into he says maranam sharanam this physical body is going to perish one day nobody is there who can stop this journey as far as physical body is concerned still he doesn't appreciate the importance to become spiritual doesn't appreciate the importance to have a spiritual goal in life he says it's such an irony tadapi na munchati papa charanam they say habits die hard right whatever we are used to doing those things are very difficult to change and in particular our daily lifestyle Pooja Guruji, when he was explaining this verse, he gave an example. He said there was a dharma shala where people would come and gather. They can stay for a few days if they are on a yatra, without any charge. There will be food, some simple thing. Then later on, they have to all go away. Now this was a group of monks who had come, and all of them had stayed there for three days. And if they gather, they'll talk some kind of spiritual topic. There was one of them. who had a very interesting past he was a thief before then he want, went on to become a saint and went on to become a monk and every night whenever they would go to sleep and wake up the next day they would find everything is thrown here and there when this person's kamandalu is on somebody else's bed that person's blanket is somewhere else and they would wonder three days it happened last day they decided we have to stay awake and see who this person is you know who is doing this nothing was stolen huh? all that happened was things were messed up then he goes on to see it was this person one who was a thief before that vasana was so strong whenever it is night he has to do something <laughs> <laughs> he cannot steal now he has become a sadhu he said this point this part i will do maharaj would give another example he would say there was one person who was a shopkeeper and he became a sadhu as a shopkeeper he was used to weighing if there is rice he'll weigh 1 kilo and give if there is some other thing 2 kilos and he can give but now he has become a sadhu if people give him bhiksha <laughs> rotis were there he would say this is 500 grams hmm? in those samskaras are very deep rooted to suddenly change it is not possible he says tadapi na munchati papa charanam and this is a deep 
a realization which will make us humble about how strong this mind is. Whatever we have decided to change, I said, don't expect quick results. Gurudev would say, after you start walking on the spiritual path, give yourself at least 30 years. At least 30 years. Now don't get caught up with the number and start calculating. <laughs> 30 years, I don't know when it will come. But what he wanted to say there was, don't celebrate very quickly. Moment you start studying, don't celebrate too quickly saying that, oh, I have studied this, I have studied that. For real change to come inside, it's a slow unfolding. So that is this perspective Bhagwan is giving here. Now every verse, as we said, of Bhajagovindam has to be understood in the right context. This verse again is one of those verses where Bhagwan criticizes but let us try to appreciate what is he trying to say here. This he is criticizing wealth. Artham anartham bhavaya nityam Nasti tata sukhalesha satyam Putrada pidhana bhajam bhitehe Nityam. Think about this at every point, at all the times, every single day. Think about this thing. What is that thing? Artham anartham. Whatever wealth we have, that artham is really speaking anartham. You know, what do you say? What do you mean by this? You know? Wealth is anartham. Nasti tata sukha lesha satyam. If we expect wealth to buy happiness, he says there is not even an iota of happiness in that wealth. As far as this facet is concerned, he says don't have any other ideas. Any sukham that we want in life, what is the absolute source? We say absolute source is Atma which is my essential nature, that is Sukha Swarupa. If I want Sukham at mind level, if I want Sukham at mind level, what is it that will give me Sukham at mind level? Dharma. This point we have seen before. Huh? Sukham is nature of Atma, which is my essential nature as pure consciousness. But if I want mind to have Sukham, the one that will bring Sukham at mind level is Dharma. Dharma will bring Punya, Punya will bring Sukham. Now it is possible that this Sukham will come through conducive Paristhiti. It will come through conducive interactions, objects, human beings, everything is included in that. But what is the end result of all the interactions that we have with the world? Either Sukham or Dukham. Right? Even indifference is really speaking Sukham only. Sometimes we say, I don't care about what is happening in other places. He says, that is also Sukham. What do they say? No news is good news. Right? So either Sukham or Dukham we will get. But to get Sukham, the transactional way for Sukham is Dharma. But how do you understand this particular statement, Artham Anartham Bhavaya Nityam? Pujo Guruji explained this in a very beautiful way. He said, whatever we really value in life, that particular thing money cannot buy. Whatever thing we really value in life, that particular thing money cannot buy. 
Now we started with simple things, eh? examples. We can buy the best of the best food, having all the vitamins, all the nutrition, organic, plant-based. You add different, different adjectives. But we cannot buy hunger. True money, huh? And we know what is a sign of good health? It's a good appetite. That particular thing, money cannot buy. So it can buy food, but not hunger. You can buy the best of the best comforter. <laughs> Memory foam, mattress. Hmm? They have different thickness. So much of research people do. Best of the best beds we can buy. Good sleep, we cannot. Means money cannot buy. Huh? We can have the most advanced medicines. But good health, money cannot buy. Now you keep adding different, different objects on the left column and see what we are really seeking from that thing in the right column. Any material thing, huh? put car, home, whatever we want you put. That thing money can buy, but good relations. Good relations, that same artha cannot buy. The thing which will really get it for us is dharma. Devotion to the Lord, all those things are for the right column. And the way to understand this verse is, if somebody focuses only on the left column, and says, that alone is what will give happiness. I say, you missed something on the right side. What was the left column made up of? Good food. Then was good living conditions. Good latest medicines, all gadgets, everything is there. But the emotions we are seeking from them, that is not available. In that light, he says, appreciate both facets of wealth. See, whenever Bhagwan uses the word Dhananjaya for Arjuna, that is what he means. That Arjuna, you have gotten lot of strength with which you got outer resources. Now invest that same strength to get inner resources. And that inner resource is in the form of sadhana, in the form of doing dharma. Artham anartham bhavaya nityam nasi tata sukha lesha satyam. Second line is another deep realization of life. He says, putra dapi dhana bhajam bhitihi. Somebody who has wealth is afraid from near and dear ones. Putra hero is not only son. Huh? Son is upalakshana. Upalakshana means you mention one, you should understand everything. So all relations. He is very, very afraid. Meaning the point here is, this person thought wealth will bring security. No doubt it has made him secure. But it has also brought insecurity. Right? This is the dvandva, which is associated with every single thing in this samsara. That part, if you appreciate, we will make dhanam as sadhana, not as sadhya. Sadhana is the means, sadhya is the goal. Putra dapi dhana bhajam bhiti, sarvatra esha vita riti. Vita riti means this is the nature of this world. That is the meaning of this word, vita riti. How will you translate the word sarvatra? What does sarvatra mean? In Sanskritam, they chat, right? Atra. Tatra, Sarvatra. What is Sarvatra? <laughs> huh? Everywhere. everywhere. But everywhere, is it in space or is it in time? You mean to say Sarvatra in space or Sarvatra in Kala? Both, but it applies more with Kala. Whatever is being said in this verse, this has been a fact of life since time immemorial. Starting from Mahabharata times, Putra dapi dhana bhajam bhitihi, entire Mahabharata is for that. 
that somebody was there who became jealous of somebody else's wealth. Rajasuya Yajna, when he does that, the treasurer of Yudhishthira, who was a Duryodhana. And this was Bhagwan Krishna's move. He said, if you keep Duryodhana, whatever has to happen later, he will take care of it. And he feels so much of jealousy, he says, we took everything away from them. But still he was able to accomplish so many things. So that is the first seed of jealousy which comes and then it keeps growing and entire Mahabharata unfolds. So Sarvatra Esha Vihita Riti, Bhagwan says it has been there for a long time. We just have to appreciate how these things are. But again and again, we should emphasize, it is not merely to criticize. Just now we saw it. Dhanam is such a thing, it can make us nishchinta. But understanding it in the right perspective. You know, there are different levels of sadhaka's evolution. Whenever such criticism comes, we should understand our teacher wants us to go to the next step. This criticism right in the beginning of our sadhana will make us develop vairagya from Vedanta. And I don't know why, because Bhajagovindam people say it's an introductory text. First text that we study in Vedanta. And if somebody has just walked in and he hears this verse, Artham Anartham Bhava Yanityam. He said, I came here so I'll get some clues, I'll get some more ideas on how to be more effective, how to be more. He said, we will be if we have a free mind. That is another facet of being independent of these things. If we have a free mind, everything will come. Goswami Tulsidas Ji says, wealth is like shadow. You chase it, it will run away from you. Quietly look at Bhagwan Rama and keep walking towards him. That thing will follow you. This is in Doha Vali. Huh? He says, why are you so running after this Artha. The one who is Lord of this Artha is Bhagwan Rama. In Gurudev's words, hold on to Narayana, Lakshmi Devi will follow. If you flip that priority and forget Narayana, then this verse is applicable. Artham Anartham Bhavaya Nityam. Okay, different ways we saw. Now, you know, this student is somebody, again and again he goes to teacher and says, teacher, tell me some more sadhanas, tell me some more sadhana. He said, 29 verses, I told you so many things. <laughs> but every time some new resolution he has to take, he says, you know, tell me something that I can start doing it. Did you do the previous one that I told you? He said, that is a different topic, you know, we'll discuss that later. So here, Bhagwan is very patiently giving few more sadhanas now. Never out of sadhana, you see. Pranayamam pratyaharam Nitya nitya viveka vicharam Japya sameta samadhi vidhanam He says the next sadhana is pranayama. What we saw this morning, sarvani indriya karmani prana karmani cha apare, atma sanyama yogagnam juhvati jnana deepite. Means pranayama, he says, is the simplest sadhana 
we don't need any paraphernalia. We cannot complain about location, time. Wherever you go, you can do this. Observing the breath, paying attention to the breath. Next Bhagavad Gita class, we'll see some sutras from Patanjali Yoga Sutra about Pranayama. But of course, our focus is not that. It is just for information purposes. If you ask me more details, I myself don't know. Okay, but sutras we can appreciate. So pranayamam, Bhagwan says, we should do. It will bring its own benefits. Pratyaharam. Pratyaharam means folding back our sense organs. Prati ahara. Mind which runs out, sense organs which are generally turned outwards, trying to pull them back and quieten them down. That is Pratyahara. But Jnana Deepite, in that word, what was the main point we had seen? Means it has to be done with knowledge. All these sadhanas, that knowledge part is the last part. Nitya Nitya Viveka Vicharam. You are not doing pranayama for any physical benefits only. People do it for physical benefits also. Right? You will get a glow. All other, you know, in one of our Swamiji's class, people, sometimes they don't sit still. Something or the other they'll be doing. They were doing this, you know. <laughs> and the Swamiji said, Amma, ye wo wala yog nahi hai, ye jnana yog hai. Means those benefits you get from doing this is different. This is Jnana Yoga. Don't mix up both of this. So he does everything, but with this clear thought that I want to abide in the truth. That Nitya Vastu, which is consciousness, that is who I am. I am not this prana. I am not this body. Nitya Nitya means Nitya Anitya Viveka Vicharam. Constantly think about this difference. Then Japya Sameta, along with Japa, do Nididhyasanam, Samadhi Abhyasa. Japya Sameta, Samadhi Vidhanam. Patanjali Maharshi writes, if we do Japa, whatever obstacles possibly can come in our sadhana, everything will be removed. He says that is the power of Japa, Whoever is our Ishta Devata, that Bhagwan's name one can take, but with lot of Shraddha, lot of reverence and faith. Japya Sameta Samadhi Vidhanam Kuru Avadhanam. Breathe life into your sadhana. That is the meaning of this word. Huh? Kuru Avadhanam means do it with attention, don't do it mechanically. Have you heard the word Avadhanam? Have you heard Shatavadhanam? Shatavadhanam means there will be 100 people who will ask questions. And the person who is responding has to answer it and create a poetry from his answer. Means one person will ask a question, he will answer, and he has to remember the word which he answered. Second person asks, he has to answer it, but create a poetry from that first verse that is, you know, first question that he answered. In between, there will be a prasanga pruchaka. He'll ask some random question, you know, some funny question. Person who is able to do 100 of this is called as Shatavadhani. If you can do 1000 questions, he is called as Sahasravadhani. Very beautiful form of art. Even to see that gives so much of joy. Satvik Sukham. I mean, they are entertaining people also, but showing what is the power of this mind. The main thing is avadhanam. Avadhanam means pay attention, don't do things mechanically. Now there will be sadhakas where we might not have started on any sadhana. If you are in that category, the instruction for us is start. But if you are already doing something, then Bhagwan comes and says the second part. He says, Kuru avadhanam. Do it with attention. There should be more depth in that sadhana. 
Mahadavadhanam. This alone is the greatest sadhana, greatest tapasya in remembrance of the Lord. Now somebody says, see when some sadhana is given which is very very difficult, you say, oh this is too difficult, I cannot do. You give very very simple, he said this is so simple, will it work? So this is that sadhaka. Just now he came and asked, right? What is the sadhana I can do? He said, pranayamam pratyaharam nitya nitya viveka visharam. Is that is too difficult? It is not my cup of tea. Then what is your, uh, what is that thing you can do? Bhagwan gives a very, very simple thing. He said, you just surrender to your teacher. Whatever he tells you do, do it with shraddha. Whatever you are looking for, everything will come. That is the beauty of this. Look at this verse. Guru Charanam Buja Nirbhara Bhakta Samsara Dachirad Bhava Mukta This mind in general doesn't like instructions. We think only teenagers don't like instructions. Eh? It is a nature of human mind. It doesn't like instructions. But if you are able to have Shraddha in somebody in whom we feel proud to take instructions, that person will be our Guru. At the feet of such teacher, he says, Guru Charanam Buja Nirbhara Bhakta. At the feet of such a teacher, take shelter. And have conviction that if I do that, I will reach my goal. This was the quality we had seen in Indra Bhagwan. Keno Panishad. He goes to Uma Devi with this firm conviction that she is Samartha. Samartha means very capable of bringing everything that I am looking for. What is it that we are really seeking? It is the second quarter. Samsarat achirat bhava muktaha. That sadhaka is freed from all samsara. First samsara begins at mind level. Second samsara is the paristhiti outside. The root of both the samsara is ignorance. All of that is removed, all of that is taken away as though for that sadhaka. Means it is one thing to get knowledge. It is another thing to see result of knowledge in our life. Right? One thing is to get knowledge. Second is to see the result of that knowledge in our life. This is both we will get through this devotion. Samsarat achirat bhava muktaha. And this mind which otherwise is so turbulent, doesn't want to do what it wants. You see, even that mind will get disciplined. Sendriya manasa niyama devam. Sense organs, mind, everything will get disciplined through this Guru Bhakti. Really speaking, this is the difference eh? between studying in a university and studying in a Gurukula. In a university, this verse will not be chanted. Sendriya manasa niyama devam. We say, you do what you want. One hour you are with us, that time we will thoroughly see Shankar Bhashya, we will see all the Sanskritam and everything. 
But after that, you are on your own. But the Guru Kala Vasa is, the student is very alert. Student is very alert. Whatever the teacher wants, in the same way he'll live his life. Guru Kalavasa will train for that. Sendriya Manasa Niyama Devam and the same Guru Bhakti will also make that disciple realize Bhagwan in their own heart. Drakshasi Nija Rudayastham Devam That Bhagwan who is seated in our own heart, that we will come to realize. The best example for this is our Totaka Charyaji. If you have seen the last episode of Upanishad Ganga, it is called as Krutajnata. When he comes and sits in Bhagwan's class, Bhagwan Shankaracharya's class, all the other students, he was waiting for Giri to come back. He was washing his teacher's clothes and he would not understand anything that Shankaracharya taught. Upanishad Ganga, it's very beautiful portrayal, you know. He goes to Sureshwara Charyaji, who was like a fatherly figure to everyone. He says, Padmapada Charyaji, whatever he says, it goes above my head. Very scholarly. Next was our uh, Hastamalaka Charyaji. He says, never speaks, just stares at the wall. <laughs> I don't know what he's saying. And I don't understand what my teacher is teaching. And Sureshwara Charyaji, whatever he would he could teach, he would teach. But this time, when other disciples say, why are we waiting for him? It is as though teaching a wall that, you know, he doesn't get anything. Bhagwan says, this is the Abhimana. I will show what is the power of Guru Bhakti. He says, call him. He comes from there and he says, today's class he will teach. Today's class he will teach and through his grace that whole Vidya comes to him. And the first composition of gratitude is called as Totakashtakam. One of the most difficult Samskritam is Totakashtakam. Right Dinesh? All different forms which are there, not easy to see the you know, meaning of it and uh, different things. But the whole prasanga is to emphasize how blissful, how great is his Guru Bhakti. Samastha Janakalyane Niratam Karunamayam Namami Chinmayam Devam Sadgurum Brahma Vitvaram That Guru who invokes the Sat within us, that is our Sadguru. So with Gurudev's grace, Bhagwan's blessings, we completed this text. We call it as an introductory text, but I know there were many layers to it. So let us chant the first verse again to keep repeating this study. Bhajago Vindam, Bhajago Vindam, Govindam Bhajamudhamate, Samprate Sannihite Kale. Shati Dukrun Karan Bhajago Vindam Bhajago Vindam Go Vindam Bhajamudhamate Go Vindam Bhajamudhamate Om Purnamadaf Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishate Om Shanti 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 Harihi Om Shri Gurubhyo Namaha Harihi Om